This is now the Yoda. This is Fern Hall. And you are listening to Aetherite Radio. Aetherite Radio. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Aetherite Radio, Gamerscape's Final Fantasy XIV podcast. I'm Fusion X. Joining us today, we've got a full house. We've got Zenidra. We've got Aldino. We've got Rook. And joining us today, we have Angelus joining us. Uh, if you don't know about Angelus, they recently did a deep dungeon run during uh, Awesome Games Done Quick last month. If you don't know about Games Done Quick, it is a speed run uh event i guess i mean they they do yeah. things all year yeah. round right uh, yeah. but if you don't know uh, about games that quick where have you been do you, what do planet you even, have you been do living you even on video game <laughs> you don't know about gdq um uh, really cool speedrun community um they do a bunch of big events throughout the year raising money for amazing causes make sure to check them out we actually i have a command let me let me gdq and that'll link you to the clip of Ad, angelus's run <laughs> Um, that one works. But go go check. Yeah, I I, I goofed Moobot for, for people coming in. Like it's funny. Like you're looking at the the vod. You just see me yelling at Moobot like that. Even <laughs> thing. Um, but anyway, we're fine. Everything's fine. Um, it's fine. It's good. It's fine. <laughs> so Angels, welcome welcome to the show. Thank you so much for for taking the time to join us today. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, go ahead, tell us real quick. Introduce yourself. Um, what you do? How long you've been doing it? Uh, I'm Angela Zenimus. I, I do a lot of Deep Dungeon solo on Twitch. I've been doing it probably... Well, I've been doing it on Twitch for probably like four years. Um, I've been doing it probably since the release of Palace, but I didn't stream it when, when it first came out like six years ago. Uh, but I predominantly do solo and kind of do a lot of guides and try to help people through the content as well. Um, so that's the, that's the gist of what I do on my end of content. Cool. That's awesome. I also just realized that we're headphone buddies. Yes, we like, are. Like, same hat, same hat. <laughs> yes, we are. Excited. No, I mean, your content is amazing, and the way that you have, I think, showcased this type mm -hmm. of content in Deep Dungeons has been such an amazing asset to the community. So we're so excited to get to talk to you about even the ways that you're bringing that to bigger communities like Games Done Quick so that people can see that there is content and there is mm -hmm. stuff that can be done that's speedrunning adjacent or is just straight up speedrunning within Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that is going to be our, our big topic. First, though, we do have some news that we need to get into. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else heard uh, details for FanFest tickets were announced. That anybody else see that? No, no. what? No, really? We should talk about that. No. <laughs> um, all right. So here's 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 how it's going to work, everybody. <sighs> tickets are one ninety nine plus taxes. U.S. dollars. Yep. Yeah, that is more than last time. That's 50 bucks more than last time. Um, you can only buy two. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, I'm going to buy some for like my, my free company or my static. No, you're not. You're going to buy one for you and and one for somebody else. Yep. Probably, preferably your spouse. If you have one, they would probably appreciate that. <laughs> um, Maybe a prospective spouse. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, if somebody was like, I got you a fan fest ticket, I'd be like, thank you, marry me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I if, I mean, if, if you're really. If, one of my OTPs. If you're, really, <laughs> if you're really smitten with somebody and you want to try and win them over more, hey, you want to go to fan fest? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if I can recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> but shoot your shot. Go for it. I mean, you know, if, if you if you feel like it's the right thing to do, uh -huh. <laughs> go for it, you know? Um, so this is how this is going to work. Um, this is going to be new to a lot of people for North America. Mm -hmm. um, it has been standard for Japan for years and years and years. They are going to do a lottery drawing. Um, so how this is going to work, you need an active sub. Uh, with an active uh, NA service, you know, NA, NA service account, right? You need to be an NA mm -hmm. player that is currently playing. Um, and there is a form that you can go in and fill out um, mm -hmm. right now. Starting right now. Yeah. Started started yesterday. Today's a Saturday. It's going until next Saturday, February 25th. So you have this week to get your yep. application in. So don't wait. Like, get, yeah. it in. get it in right now. Like, open up another tab. Go do it. Why you listen to us <laughs> talk about it? Um, so they'll have that, 
the drawing will happen. Um, if if there are tickets left, there will be a general sale, uh, and that's going to be uh, March sixth, um, between March sixth and March thirteenth. Um, yeah, I would be very surprised if that happened, but yeah. Um, <laughs> If, if you want to get in, yeah. you know, enter the drawing and and cross your fingers for that that good RNG. <laughs> I mean, I've heard it both ways. There's a lot of people who are like 199 is a bit steep or don't want to get into the lottery anyway. So definitely check the the general sale. But yeah, it's not likely. I it's, guess I don't know. It's yeah. one of those things. Like I'm not un understanding with like FanFest always operates at a loss. For any any big company that hosts an event like this, right? This year it's going to be just like it was supposed to be a few years ago. This is going to be the biggest one they've had in NA. Um, this is going to be at mm -hmm. the LA Convention Center, which probably costs a little more to rent out than like the ballroom, like two ballrooms in uh, the Rio in Las Vegas, right? Uh, they're expecting more people, so they got to mm -hmm. accommodate for the last one was at the LA one. This one is at the Vegas one. Mm -hmm. LA. It's, it's just what you said. Did I? It doesn't matter. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no. I meant, I meant, I meant the one that they were in yeah. San Francisco. Yeah. San, no, San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. San, San Diego. Diego. Yep. I, I knew this. So. Unimportant detail. I, I would have remembered sure people, if I went. Yeah. I just want to make sure that people listening weren't yeah. like, wait, L.A. Hold no, on. Not no, no. <laughs> Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. LA, I mean, I. Yes, Vegas. I. Yeah. I'm so torn on this. Mm -hmm. I don't. Okay. Let me try and figure out which one of my feelings I want to state first on it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> I don't hate it, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Because I will say that I think one of the greatest frustrations for me ever as, as a human being, which, to be fair, I think things are going pretty good if this is one of my top frustrations. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but one of my greatest frustrations is when you have something like a drop of an a special expansion or a limited collector's thing or a convention ticket or whatever it is, and you have to rush at three in the morning to try and get your dumb tickets and the website is crashing nonstop and you can't get in and you don't know if you're going to get tickets and you're like desperately mashing it and you have everybody else with you and you're all and trying all to get you want to do is see Taylor Swift. I just exactly. I find I find that exhausting and so stressful yes. and so anxiety inducing. So in that regard, I think this is better. And I do also think, hey, like. I'm glad that they are doing stuff with, you know, if you are subscribed, if you are a player, you know, you get this little preference period because I, I think that's nice too, in theory. There have been some problems with that because like people who largely play on NA, but maybe originally registered mm -hmm. in EU or things like that literally cannot enter these to be able to do it because it's like region locked. Or if that time frame doesn't work for you for NA, but you wanted to go to the EU or JP one or whatever it was, um, you're unable able to do that. So I know why regionally I think they're trying to kind of limit it because they want people in those regions that are available to go and nearby mm -hmm. and that it's accessible to them and that play the game to be able to do it. So again, in theory, I think it all works. And mm -hmm. I am glad to have the time to be able to just be like, oh, hey, okay, yeah, well, we've gotten to the, you know, whatever, and we can go in and we can just say, hey, we'd like to be eligible for this. Um, but at the same time, I think that anytime you leave anything like this up to some kind of random raffle, the anxiety factor is still there, just mm -hmm. like we've seen with housing in the game, just like we've seen with other <laughs> things, yeah. where you're just like, if I just don't get picked for whatever reason, and I've already booked my hotel, which many of us have, and many of the hotels were non-refundable in the mm -hmm. area, like... So, like, if you've already paid a ton of money for a hotel, um, I know with the one that I got, I had to do a full deposit of the cost and Oof, reserve yeah. it, and it's non-refundable. What and the like, hell? I know. Like, it's it. they have blocked it because they know that weekend mm -hmm. is going to be popular, and they want to get as much money as possible for Get people. that nerd money, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, like, it's really frustrating when you want to try and plan around that, or if you're a creator and you want to plan around it. So, that's yeah. my many thoughts that's, on this no, one. No, and, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a fair point, and I, and I think we brought this up earlier, too. I mean, that's that's the problem when they announce an event like this, is they say, hey, we're going to do it, here are the dates, and you don't know if you're going to have tickets, but you know that if you do get tickets, you want to be close to the event. Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's, it's just, it happens. That's just, you know, it's it sucks. I know uh, in years prior, I think the, the first uh 14 fan fest 
Um, I think they ended up making a deal with the hotel for some like special like room blocks or something, mm-hmm. and those 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 were gone like in a break immediately. Of yeah. Um, but yeah, it would be nice if they could make the announcement and the tickets available within like a week or two of each other mm. just so you don't end up with that because you know it, it's it, it sounds funny but you hear about people it's like all right cool got my flight booked it's like oh, well, you don't have a ticket why? yet well i guess i'll just walk <laughs> around the strip if i don't get in it's like that's gonna suck <laughs> like, well, <why>? okay so <laughs> there's like two parts there I, I definitely had friends being like did you book your air airfare yet and i'm like hell no no <laughs> no I will, I will honestly, even if I don't get tickets, I will still probably go because it's freaking Vegas. I love mm-hmm. Vegas. I want to see shows and my friends will be there. So like yeah. even even if I don't get to walk into the FanFest building, my friends are going to have to walk out at some point. It's only two days worth of event and it doesn't last all night. And if you're in Vegas, you better be hanging out with me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Ooh, Look, my birthday I, is ooh. three days <laughs> after the event ends, so I will be in Vegas after the event ends. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. I, I thought Aldi and I, and I intend to spend Vegas. Yeah. Spend Vegas. Spend his birthday in Vegas to spend all of Vegas. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Angelus, are you planning on trying to go? I would like to. Yes. Yeah. I, I like a lot of you. I haven't booked anything. No hotels, mm-hmm. nothing. But I'll wait for the tickets. Once the tickets come in, yeah. then I'll be like, yep, get them I all did ready get a to go. Hotel. I mean, and it is refundable, but I won't oh. be refunding it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, the benefit is, I mean, there are ho- like if you do the bigger hotels in Vegas, you can usually cancel without too much of an issue. Um, mm. But this time around, uh, the Fan Fest isn't just in one of those hotels. Yeah. It's, it's it, off well, strip a little bit. I, I say off strip but like it hasn't been in the Rio multiple times. <laughs> off the strip. <stair. laughs> um, but I mean, the, the benefit here is like the there is a, a monorail in Vegas too that goes right to the mm-hmm. convention center, so you could go yeah. and stay at like Bally's or Paris or something, and then just take the monorail over, which is is nice. Yeah, it's just we gonna booked, be very hot. Yeah, we booked a little bit further away. I mean, like five ten minutes if even. Mm-hmm. I don't even you know yeah. like I think it's eight minutes from the convention center, but that's technically further away mm-hmm. because the prices were better because we just bought a house or something. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, did you spend some money recently? <laughs> it is like we spent Big a little expenses. bit of money. <laughs> but other than like those big hotels were offering refunds, but mm-hmm. many of the other ones that were like outside yeah. of that direct on top of the convention center weren't. So just a little heads up to everybody. Mm-hmm. Double check that, triple check it, look and see, you know, if you're going to be in desperate dire straits, if you have to do a full on upfront deposit, mm-hmm. like double check that too, if you're yeah. booking or if you get these. Um, I agree, Fusion, in that I wish that they would give us a little bit more headway on this <laughs> and yeah. that like, you know, this whole process would start a little bit sooner. Um, but I do think this is a nice way to at least allow people a slightly less infuriating yeah. experience. Yeah. Small and, and bit I, of advice yeah. to anybody who is going early or staying late. And you gotta shut up, cat. <laughs> and you gotta <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got a hotel near the convention center and just to, to deal with it. It's a shorter walk but more expensive. Stay in a different hotel for those early days. Just switch hotels. Stay in. Yeah. I yeah. like the Luxor. The Luxor is cheap. It looks like a pyramid. That's cool. <laughs> See, I, I, I needed to get a really close hotel because of all the merch uh-huh. I'm going to have to carry. Oh, so yeah. Right. That's very you know, true for you. I don't want to you know, strain my arms too much. Um, <laughs> all right. Another, another thing to consider, too, and I'm surprised they didn't mention this anywhere mm. with this ticket announcement. Uh, there is going to be an f- orchestra concert the day after FanFest. Right. Um, yes. Before we were wondering if maybe they would bundle tickets somehow or if they would link up the two. We haven't heard anything else about the orchestra concert. So um, I would assume that everybody going to FanFest is going to then also want to try to go to the orchestra concert. But there might be a little bit of a an in there where if you couldn't get tickets for FanFest, but mm-hmm. you're going to be in Vegas anyway or you you know or something, you could also still maybe get tickets for the orchestra concert. Yeah. Um, but again, no, no details on the tickets yeah. for that. Yeah, and watch, you know, watch your favorite streamers and, and you know, where you're kind of in the community because there will be meetups, there will be group things, you know, outside of the convention. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't get a ticket, but you're locked in, there's probably stuff to do. Yeah, it's it's, it's Vegas. Go, Vegas. Go to go yeah. to Eminem World. Yeah. <laughs> taste all the all the different Eminem. Go to the, go the there's the Coke store where you can taste the yeah. Cokes of the world. The very bad go ones. To, yeah. Go to a certain. <laughs> delay so uh, show or five there's like mm-hmm. 12 of them. there's a bunch of them oh yeah yeah, yeah. 
So, but this is not the how to do fan fest show. We should do that though. We should we have should like yeah, we should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we'll have all these great ideas and then we'll land in Vegas in July and be like, it's too hot. Wrong. It's 109 <laughs> Fahrenheit. Yeah. This was a mistake. Um, I've done that twice and I'm <laughs> dumb. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I think that that pretty much covers everything um, yeah. for fan fest tickets. Enter the lottery. If you want to go um again may the 12 be with you yeah <laughs> limited two tickets so uh, tell everybody that has even thought about the idea of maybe going uh to enter oh and now's that's the important time to note mm -hmm. if you enter this raffle you do not have to buy tickets so if you enter this particular this initial raffle you will get an email that says like yes you got in if you didn't get in they have stated you will not be contacted, period. Mm -hmm. So double check your, you know, your recycling, you know, they double have, check they your have trash the email to, to like whitelist yeah. on the actual announcement. So make sure to, to check that out and whitelist it. But even if you're going, hey, I'm just thinking about going and I don't know financially if I can yet. Like, I mean, obviously, if you don't think there's any way feasibly mm -hmm. that you can go, don't take the tickets from somebody. If, if you think can, there's a, a you know, like, a snowflake chance in hell, Put in, yeah. put in for the lottery. Enter the raffle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or snowflakes chance in Vegas in July, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that. We hope to see you there. Hopefully we'll all get there. I'm sure yeah. we will. Um, also, uh, talking about uh, music, Death Unto Dawn soundtrack dropped on uh, all the streaming platforms, Spotify, YouTube mm -hmm. Music, Apple Music. Um, make sure to check that out. There are some great band versions of, you know, Insatiable, yep. Ultima, uh, stuff that they used, uh, you know, done by the Primals on that soundtrack. Um, a lot also of eight music, uh, Final Fantasy yeah. eight, because it was Eden. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of uh, near, right? Like this, this might yeah. low-key mm -hmm. be the best soundtrack. I'm I'm gonna say that because it's Eden, it's near, it's Ultima, it's is um is it's uh, the trials, is uh this the, the, the weapon with, trial. With to the edge. Yes, it is the one with to then the edge yes, as well. This, yep. this is yep. the best soundtrack then, yes. <laughs> it really I is agree. confirmed. I'm fusion yeah. and I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean nothing's gonna be to the edge for me, like ever. I just, uh, it's just so good. For multiple reasons. Um, yeah. Speaking of music, uh, this past Again. week, Theater Rhythm Final Bar, right? Lots of music this week. Theater Rhythm mm -hmm. Final Bar line uh, released for Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4. Um, okay, this, whoever, the developers on this game, mm -hmm. like two thumbs up. If I had more hands, I would stick more thumbs up. Um, mm -hmm. They have the track A Long Fall in this. Um, there are multiple references to the performance from FanFest. <laughs> in this in stage there. um the spotlights correspond to the dancers uh some of the arrow movements correspond to the the choreography from the onstage performance it's ridiculous and i love it and i just if, <laughs> if you haven't checked this out go check it out um it's it's so good <laughs> yeah there's a demo you can't play a long fall in it but you can no. play other just to see if you like it. yeah definitely definitely go check it out if you like final fantasy music it's a fun game so Mm -hmm. Hey, do you like Final Fantasy? People watching Final Fantasy? It's all, it's all right. It's all right. This is okay. No, uh, <laughs> but there's, there's there's like a whole bunch of different editions and stuff too of it because there's like a whole bunch of DLC. There's like near DLC, Saga DLC, mm -hmm. um, a bunch of stuff. Chrono kind of Cross like, and Trigger. The, yeah, lots oh. of stuff right now. Oh. Lots of stuff coming down the down the road. So uh, check that out if if you like uh, music rhythm games. And that's it for news. We did it. Yeah. Go into the lottery. Uh, and that's going to take us into our main topic here. Uh, we need to talk about GDQ and Deep Dungeons with our guest, Angelus. Thank you again for joining us. Um, Thank you. Thank you. When when <laughs> did you start um, doing Deep Dungeon content? And, and, and then specifically on stream? Mm. Uh, literally the moment Palace released in uh, yeah. 2016. Because, <laughs> because I've, always, I've always been interested in soloing like MMO stuff. Like I, I used to play in FF11, then for some reason I mm -hmm. always just was like, "Oh, what can I solo in this game for mm -hmm. no reason?" Which made no sense, but I still want to do it anyway. But it was fun. Um, and eleven, were you were right? eleven, oh, eleven great. soloing yes. was it was a uh, beast. You're red mage, <laughs> red mage, <laughs> red mage, ninja, yeah, was, blue yep. mage, all of, all those, yeah. Yep, I was um, red mage main. Mm -hmm. And then like I was just it was just from the patch notes. The patch notes said you could go in solo, and the patch notes also had like it had a ranking system. So I'm like, oh, that. Sounds great. Let me just mm -hmm. try to do this. And um and even even from the very beginning they had the ranking system. So it was like 
I get my name on the board and then it's like, oh, cool. Let's just see about trying to get all the other jobs like slowly but surely. So that's really what drew me into the content. And then streaming it came later, I think. Well, it wasn't like the, the title didn't show up till Stormblood, even though it got released in Heaven's Word. And it was it was mm-hmm. in conjunction with the Red Mage release in, in Stormblood. So I think that was when I started to push out more like, okay, let's try to go for like all the way to the end to 200. And that was also in conjunction with, well, if I wanted to do this and get the title, I probably would have to have some type of evidence that I did it. So that's mm-hmm. why I started recording it and eventually streaming it and all that. So yeah, it started around there. That's when I started doing doing the content and streaming the content. Nice. And now, and now you said you, you played 11. So how did you get into 14? Was it just kind of a natural, like, oh, it's the next one. Like, of course, I'll try it and, and see how it goes or... Yeah, kind of. Um, so I was kind of interested in the 1.0 release, but mm-hmm. I did not have a computer at the time that could play it. Like, it, I was yeah. on a laptop, so there's no way I could yeah. even try it. But I was debating it with, like, my, my 11 crew and, and all that stuff that we wanted to look into it, but no one, like, took it seriously. I think one of my one of my fans took it seriously. Um, but then when 2.0 was happening, that was more of the actual, like, okay, we had the demo and we had the beta and we're trying it out and it all seemed to work. So we kind of migrated a lot of my old friends into the game. So yeah, it was like kind of the natural progression of from 11 into 14. And I had stopped 11 for like maybe about a year mm. before 14 came out 2.0 and then just like went into 14 after that. Nice. Um, were you doing other stuff in 14 before you uh, delved into Deep Dungeon? Were you like raiding or anything? No, actually PvP more. Um, mm. I did PvP in in when it first released, uh, I was kind of into Feast and when Seal yeah. came in. So I was like kind of really getting into PvP at the time. Um, and I did a lot of the, the, the Feast stuff when it was released. So that yeah. was that. And then I kind of started going halvesies and then eventually kind of shifted over more into Deep Dungeon. Nice. Halvesies. <laughs> So I know, like, obviously we have the, the ranking system in Deep Dungeon. That was a huge draw for you. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have any kind of, like, favorite memories when you started out with, with Deep yeah. Dungeon? Maybe, like, looking back, right, like some, some funny slip-ups or, you know, things you learned early on that helped you? I think, like, going back to the first progression when you're trying to get the title for the first time. I mean, first of mm-hmm. all, there was, like, really nothing to really reference. Like, there was no one to really go to, no real information to go right. to. So we were kind of just figuring out on our own. So there was just a lot of things that just happened that would just, like, kill you or just you just <laughs> encounter that. You're just like, oh, well, okay, I guess I'll just have to remember this next time. I mean, like, the one that, like, people always die to the slimes in Palace because they explode after a certain time. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, tra- the traps on the walls and like certain enemies with like just silly enrages because because Palace really did feel like it was meant for multiple people, not really for solo. So mm. a lot of that felt like it was designed to kind of challenge if you kind of slipped up as a four man. So then now having to deal with it by yourself, it's like, OK, well, you're probably encountering all of these weird mechanics and you just have to either be ready for it or uh, just delete them fast enough or something like that. So trying to <laughs> learn that. And go back in, spend another like X amount of hours to get back to that point, and then learn something new, and then die, and then go back. That was a lot of the the frustration of the progression, but it was all building the knowledge, you know. And over time, you kind of just got more knowledge, more knowledge, more more knowledge, and then seeing how it is right now with how much there is in the in the game mode, it's it's pretty insane. But it's kind of cool to be able to just put that all into into display and just like go to the bank of of information, and just use it to get those clears. Right, you know, people you talk say... about. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Did you say traps on the walls? Oh yeah, oh yeah, traps on the walls. Well, the lower floors are a little notorious because there's a there's a lot of floors that can kind of breeze through because a lot enemies are a lot easier. But there are mm. literal traps that are like even if you we tell you to hug the walls to avoid the traps, but there are That's walls all... that are like right on the on the walls. So even if okay. you're like okay, I thought you like meant like that wall. on the wall. <laughs> oh. I was like, <laughs> the nature's like when it released, they had traps on the wall. <laughs> Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I've not done it nearly as thoroughly as you. I did make it all the way to the top or bottom, I guess. But yeah. I was like, there were traps on the walls the whole time. How did I not get murdered? <laughs> Man, I'm so good. I never saw those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Their floor traps yeah, are just on the wall. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I'm right at the very corner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, did you ever have a moment early on? Because hearing you talk about that, right, where you were like, they said you could do it for as a solo run, but as you know, people were getting into it, you could obviously kind of tell maybe it had been balanced towards the team and like a group going in. Did you ever have a moment, or did the community have a moment early on where people were convinced, like, I actually don't think you can solo this? Yes, <laughs> I <laughs> I actually straight up I, I I always say this, but I straight up reach quit at a at a palace like early on. 
Oh, and wow. like because it was interesting because I was like I mentioned I was doing PvP, so I think it was like season two or three of Feast, and I was getting like pretty good with the rankings. So it was like I had to pick one. Like, do I commit to PvP? Do I mm. commit to this? So I just spent my time into PvP trying to get up to ten, top ten, which means I had no time for the deep dungeon. But it was at the time when no one had the clear, so a lot of us, or not a lot of us, there weren't very many people trying. But you were chasing essentially something that was impossible because no one had done it. So it was like you know. Do I keep banging my head against this wall? Can it really be done? Do we have to adjust it at some point to make it happen? Um, and I don't know how long it was that I like kind of quit, if you will, and then and then mm. the, the first clear came around. But but yeah, it was it was it was really frustrating. But then after that first clear came in, then it was like okay, well someone did it, so it must be mm -hmm. doable. And then kind of gradually came back into it. Um, I mean, I I had actually gotten heaven on high first before I came back to palace later on, which mm. gave me a lot more confidence into it. But but yeah, yeah, I definitely did have that super frustration of the game mode um, until just I just got better. Essentially, is mm -hmm. there what 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 made you after that come back into it? Was it seeing somebody clear that was like, okay, now it is possible, and then you jumped back in, or was what was the moment that made you go back into deep dungeon? I would say, I think opportunity. I think the timing mm -hmm. opportunity came in because like it was. Can't really remember the the dates, etc. Mm -hmm. But basically, like Heaven on High had come out, um, and I was kind of done a little bit with PvP, so I'd done all the things I wanted to. So it was kind of just like I didn't want to do it as much. So Heaven on High released. I was really excited about that. I went really hard with that one, and then I got that clear. And I think that confidence rolled over into into mm -hmm. Palace. And already knowing that a couple people had gotten Palace clears and everything, it, it was just like it was like time to come back to to put the time back into <laughs> it and see how I do into Palace. And that's when in. And I think on top of wanting to go back and then seeing the results of coming back, how I was like struggling to get through like 181 and then coming back after Heaven on High and just getting up to like 190 every single time. It's like, mm. wow, okay, well, I guess I just had to just get better at the game mode and then eventually got the clear pretty pretty quickly actually after that. So as as you were doing the the climbs, I'm curious, like, is there like one thing or like one mechanic or one enemy type that you were kind of stuck on for a little bit that like you just really remember, like once you finally like figured it out, that kind of like sticks in your mind? For for Palace, when I was first progressing, it was that 181 set to 190 that was just mm. very hard because it felt and and, and actually it was so funny because one of my community pulled up an old forum post from uh, the Square Next forums that I made complaining about. Like, oh, this thing is just really hard. You guys should, like, consider these adjustments and stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it was, like, the chest RNG was tough. Like, everything was... It, it was mostly just the RNG. And some of the enemies, like, were, like, oh, they had enrages. So, like, you know. Um, and then that was, like, the problem that I was having. And then eventually, when I was going through Heaven on High, I remember one of the important prog points I had, which for Red Mage, was to kill one of the harder enemies, which was the Mimic like without a steal at the really high floors. And I felt like mm. if I got that down with Red Mage, then that would allow me to mitigate the uses of my of my power-ups and everything so I can get further with more power-ups. And that lesson kind of carried over into Palace. And then once I went to Palace, it was like, oh yeah, if I could just like take more palms from before and then bring them up higher and not use as much, then it made mm -hmm. the whole experience easier. And then that's where that progression came into play and also with the consistency um, going up so i would say that was the biggest adjustment that i made over time and still kind of making it even up till now how to mitigate using pro manners and just getting through without using as much so i have more when it's on to the harder floors mm. yeah i mean that that's cool that you can kind of take things learn from one and take them into the other is there between uh palace of the dead and heaven on high are there what are the unique challenges to each of mm. those that maybe don't kind of carry over skill wise um, I think the biggest, the, the 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 one at the forefront is just Behemoth exists in Palace and it doesn't yeah. exist in Heaven of High. Um, and having to do a DPS check on a boss is just kind of crazy. I mean, I think even <laughs> even in the very beginning, that was just like insane. And I think over time, you just had people in the community, especially just just try so many things out before they finally figured it out. And then it just became like a possibility. And I think even with this content, especially, if you just get one person to prove that it's possible, that really opens the floodgates to people. Mm. Like, you know what? Let me let me actually spend 50 times doing this because you know what? Someone at least did it once, you know? Yeah. Um, and in Heaven on High, not having a DPS check helped because then the challenge is a little bit different. I mean, in, in Heaven on High, you have to deal with the enemies just hitting you so much harder than Palace. Um, mm. There is a big difference between the two of them. Um, 
but it becomes more on, po on poem and management um, of how to get through and how to survive those harder enemies. And then, of course, the the floor uh, difference between the two of them help. I mean, Palace yeah. is so long with the two hundred. <laughs> Yeah, and heaven on high could. I mean, if you're if you're kind of even semi hardcore or want to do like just hard time, you could do that in one day, um, pretty well. Just one mm. to one hundred straight shot one day. Where palace is, I could, but it's, you know, I don't know if you really want to do it in one day. <laughs> but yeah, it, it helps a lot. People people in the community feel just so much better with heaven on high because they feel like okay, I can just keep going at it, and not feel like bogged mm. down by kind of the floor is being boring, if you will. Right. Mm. It's heaven on high. It is so interesting because I think those changes were really good, mm -hmm. right? I, I think so many people have felt like it's more accessible. And yet you still get good difficulty. I don't know if you right. feel the same, right? But it always felt to me like while the length of Palace is definitely a gauntlet in and of itself, I didn't always feel like it was necessary for you still to have the amount of fun or like the challenge mm -hmm. and that even condensing the floors was still fine as long as you know you had a similar range of challenge i don't know if you feel the same or if you feel like no actually it is way easier in heaven because of that shift in in design but um i i mean to me it, it always felt like they still offered unique challenges but that it was just a lot less frustrating to try and get through heaven on high yeah, it, it, it was. I mean, time obviously helps. Um, I think I think Heaven on High really was designed a little bit more solo-oriented um, mm -hmm. than obviously Palace was. I think Palace was just like, you know, oh, you can, by the way, you can solo it. Yeah. Um, but then Heaven on High, I think they probably saw at the time, they put in this challenge, they put in the, the title and everything, and they took that into consideration making Heaven on High. Because I think at the time Heaven on High released, you had like two necromancers in the whole world. Mm -hmm. So they probably were like, yeah, maybe we should like tone it down a little bit, you know, make all these. And 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 I don't know like how the devs would consider it, but you had like interesting adjustments in Heaven on High. Like you had the Pomander Conceal, which was tremendous for really all everyone being able to just like walk through a treasure room of enemies to get to the mm -hmm. exit. Where if you're in Palace, you had a treasure room on the exit, and you had to clear everything out. Like you had no choice; you had to kill right. everything. Um, you had an exorbitant amount of proximity aggros and palace, like just just getting through enemies were annoying. But in Heaven and I, like a vast majority of them are, are all side aggro, um, mm. and and the fact that you had like uh, the the rooms were more structured too, so you didn't have like the the weirder traps like we were just mentioning, like like traps on the corners and the walls and everything. They, they're not as prominent in the higher floors of Heaven and High, so you, you felt like there was some type of quality of life that was put mm -hmm. into Heaven and High with the experience, but. A lot of times, like, even, even the people running Palace, I mean, what I try to tell people, like, you could enjoy Palace through the lower floors if, like, you try to, like, aim for scoring and something like that, because that gives mm -hmm. it a further challenge. Or uh, just just the fact that everyone has to do it. Like, like you know, there's no shortcut. Like, you want the title, you have to do it from the, from the start. And you're not the only one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, Heaven of High certainly felt just a little bit, just a quality of life improvement. But I think it's still nice that Palace is just hasn't changed really in, in like six years. It's really right. the same since the very beginning. So it's, it's kind of nice. I imagine... I had... uh, go, go ahead, then. No, 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 you. Okay. I, I was just going to say, I imagine um, just from statistics of who used Deep Dungeon, like it was very, very popular for leveling and probably still is uh, at expansion drops. Yeah. But the more and more we get away from that uh, level area being mm -hmm. where we start the the less and less use it's going to see so i think um that maybe was and, and tell me what you think obviously uh maybe it was some of the inspiration for them making heaven on high more to its soul because those are the people who are gonna keep doing deep yeah, dungeon keep and heaven on high and that thing yeah those are the people who are going to use the content forever you know, it's interesting. If you put it in the mindset of Heaven on High, I wonder if that was what they were thinking. Because, mm -hmm. like, as I mentioned, there was there was only two Necromancers at the time, so I don't know if they were thinking like, oh, mm -hmm. like this will be something that can have the longevity that it has and everything. Um, so it makes me wonder if that was that kind of their 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 underlying plan of of action of this thing because it really started to kick more into like I would say what 2000 the end of 2019 2020 when people more people started to really engage into the solo content and everything mm -hmm. I mean you did not have anything other than red mage clearing either of the two for the longest mm -hmm. time and only very slowly did you start seeing the other jobs and shadowbringers kind of helped with that a little bit especially with the tanks with the adjustments to the tanks that, that mm -hmm. really helped some of that changes 
Um, but as you saw people just trying to push this challenge and proving that there was a clear on the board and everything, people again started to believe, okay, well, there's a gunbreaker clear. Let's try to let's everyone try to just try to push out gunbreaker. And as more videos came in, I think the belief kicked in and, and you started to see that. But I, I just don't know if that was like the original thought mm -hmm. and design that people would do that. Even the scoring system that the, the community had cracked in like, I think the end of 2000, either the, like somewhere around 2020, that they cracked the whole entire scoring system. And even up till now, people are still trying, trying to optimize it. Like, I don't know if they thought people would end up doing that because mm -hmm. it is very intricate uh, with, with what's in the, in, in the, in, in how it all works and how to get it to work out. But I don't know if that was the intention of, of what they wanted the community to do, but mm. it's been cool to see what people have been pushing. And even up till now, you're starting to see a lot more um, doing like speed run type thing. It's just making up their own speed run category and just right. trying to go fast. So it's, it's really cool to see mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It's always really cool to see the difference between like when, when any content in any game drops, what the devs intended for it and then what the community actually does with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my yeah, God, yeah, Eureka. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Especially like Eureka. Um, it's so interesting to hear this though, because I mean, it, it makes absolute sense to me, right? Like mm -hmm. Angels, you're talking about the fact that even back to 11, you loved solo content and mm -hmm. you played classes that would allow you to do that. And that was an actual thing that many people did in 11 for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And as we have seen this shift, like you were mentioning, in recent years, much more recently, mm -hmm. to this idea of how do we continue to expand MMOs to an ever-growing audience? Hey, well, why don't we try to appeal to maybe those who were always excluded from the interest of MMOs, at least on paper, you know? Mm -hmm. Those who want something or want content or want a way to navigate these games that is closer to a single-player experience and then that allows them to engage with MMO capabilities on their own terms and like mm -hmm. in a way that they might want or not want. And so having this kind of content and having it be something that appeals to that, even if they didn't intend it, because I, I right. agree, I feel like maybe it surprised them in a sense, but then as they have like continued to grow their facets and, you know, development um, focuses in the game, I think it has become something that they probably think about really actively, like, oh, wow, yeah, look at how this has caught attention. But mm -hmm. when you were saying that there had only been like two necromancers, up to heaven on highest release i didn't know that i yep. assumed i was like oh this has been in the game forever so there's got to be like hundreds of necromancers yeah. <laughs> that's absolutely <laughs> wild because now we have quite a few more right yeah we are probably sitting in in the thousands now but even yeah. then that's still like relatively small mm, um, yeah. i mean so so heaven on high released in 2018 so we had two by then that mm -hmm. like two or three, I'd say like two, three, maybe a safe number would be five. But like Bowser was released in 2016. That's two years. Like the first yeah. clear was in 2018, March of, of, of that. So it took a long time for people to finally figure this out. And even then, like, so that was 18. A year later, I get my clear and I was still only the 14th to get the clear. So there's still like wow. a massive gap with the amount of wow. time that it took just to get this clear. Yeah. Um, but I think with the information, like the information getting posted and just sharing in, people just watching, you know, just just getting more information, being able to jump mm -hmm. into it with all that information really helps. Because trying to do this without info is, is very hard. Um, yeah. Because there's just so much to absorb and so much to learn at the time. Even funny enough, like you know, like you're mentioning how like how much the community kind of takes it and takes it for their own. I mean, I think it was like two or three weeks, or three or four weeks ago, we discovered this thing that we had never thought about before. How in Heaven on High, the last three floors, someone's just like, hey, did you guys notice that there's that we never get a no magicite debuff on like the last three floors? And everyone's like, wait, really? And everyone starts looking at all the VODs. And yeah, that seems like that's the case. And even in Palace, you don't get uh, no knockback on the last three. And that was just recent. Like, we mm. just it's just something that you just never notice. And that allows you to kind of adjust your strategies yeah. for how to manage your pro managers because that's important. You know, if you're getting to those last three to the final to the final finish line, how to manage what you're using can come into play. So. People are still discovering things up till now, and it's just so cool to, to just see that kind of evolve over time. For me, I love the parallel between, you know, challenging deep dungeon content and ultimates, because mm -hmm. similarly, it's about your timeline in the run. And of course, that's vastly expanded over ultimate, which is already long. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of the like the knowledge that you get, just like in raiding, you know, what is a dynamo? We know what a dynamo is or a chariot, but there's parlance for deep dungeons as well the slime the traps the no magic you know what i mean it's 
it's cool to see the community latch on to this in a similar way that it must have been cool to see the first raids. I, I remember being there for EverQuest, right? The developers had no idea people would love raiding. They had no idea. Mm-hmm. And when it you started to happen, me. they're like, holy crap. <laughs> the, the the commentary of uh, finding out things uh, uh-huh. far, far after people had already been clearing. Mm-hmm. Me actually uh, think of something similar to Charles. Uh, it's a very specific example, but we got through like a raid tier and a half before people were like, hey, when we get mechanics, a lot of times it's grouped with tanks, healers, and DPS, so we can completely change Mm -hmm. our uh, strategies based on this, and now people just look for that. Whereas through Coil, that wasn't a thing. Maybe it wasn't even in Coil, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just cool that that it's it's everywhere. Those little, wait a minute, I see a pattern here. Mm -hmm. The mechanical design, I mean, across any kind of challenging content, it's just about how you kind of conceptualize it, right? Like, and I think there are many players who are endgame players or raiders, like you're both saying, that could really love digging into something like this, especially, you know, when they're on break or they're waiting between whatever, mm-hmm. or there's not a new ultimate, or to give this a chance, because I think it does test that similar kind right. of planning, strategy, all these sorts of things. But I think a lot of times, especially in MMOs, Initially, people will just kind of shoehorn themselves into one specific thing, like all I do is raid or all I do is this or that. And then sometimes they don't even realize like, oh, hey, well, actually, there's all these other challenges that would be adjacent to this that Mm -hmm. I would love. Um, And it did because we were talking about this. I wanted to bring it back to your first clear. So you were saying that you were 14th with Palace. Um, I don't know what ranking with heaven on high, but that'd be cool to hear too. And um, I was curious, like, wh- how did that first clear go, at least in mm-hmm. either of them for you? Um, So I'll do it in order. So heaven on high was, I was sixth or seventh on the, mm-hmm. uh, it took me a month to clear and I was going like every day, but a month is pretty fast considering, you know, three years after palace. <laughs> right. Um, But yeah, it was, it was a month in, it was just, but I was like swapping jobs at the time because I, I wasn't a hundred percent convinced that it was only red mage that can clear at the time, but you know, I was just trying to see how the jobs play and everything, but eventually I just stuck it to Red Mage and pushed it through. Um, and that clear was that would that was tough. I mean, I was just learning and just progressively every run, just trying to figure something that I could change to to get better, and just it was just keep like changing the the strategy until something just worked, and then finally it did work for Heaven on High. But with the progression of like Palace of the Dead, how before I was struggling in the, in the in the late floors and then coming back to it after all the experience in Heaven on High, um, that was just way smoother when I finally came back to it. Uh, like it was like six or eight months later after Heaven on High, I went to Palace. Um, and, and, and I mentioned this before, it's just the experience I got from Heaven on High and the learning of how to handle certain enemies without power-ups and just the, the kiting and the healing and everything specifically on Red Mage just helped. It just... It just it just helped the experience get get uh get me up there way more consistently. I felt confident too, mm. um, having to hit like like I think I was hitting like one one ninety like every single run back to back to back, and it's like okay, at some point I'm gonna get this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then eventually, yeah, we did. So so that was pretty much how it went, and it was really exciting because it was just a, a goal that I was chasing for so long. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was very satisfying, and then I think. I don't know. I think it's shortly after that. I was like, okay, let's just try it on other jobs after that. So, yeah, let's just yeah, let's just go right back in. But yeah, it was a good times. I'm curious when you when you go through and and try and tackle the deep dungeon solo. Like, do you have runs where you go in with other people and you kind of like get the lay of the land and like you know take notes on how things react? Because it's it's the same just by yourself when you're doing solo, right? Mm. So, um, so this might actually enter into into a later topic when you get into EO, but basically, mm-hmm. like how I did it was just on my own. I mean, I did do a, a climb in Palace, and I think I did one climb in Heaven on High, and like one or two climbs in Palace where I took a whole team. But mm. for me personally, and this is totally subjective, but I I think it's just better to uh, to learn the mechanics and how the enemies hit you like one on one. I mean, it, it mm, feels yeah. like it's not as genuine if you're with other people because you might miss things like uh an example in palace is that you have uh i think two or three i think two enemies that will do party mechanics but they will not do them when you're solo they just mm. don't do it oh, okay. um like the gooboos will do a pull in like they'll pull you in it was like similar to like the lost city uh dungeon right. where they pull you in they eat you but they don't do the eating part but in a party they'll pull you in and then they'll do some other mechanic but they don't do that solo huh. and the gravekeepers the guys with the coffin hands they'll mm-hmm. do like a aoe thingy 
a big gigantic light but they don't do that solo either so there are things that you will just not see or or mm. see if you're by yourself and not to mention the young mages especially with palace where in a party you're probably killing everything so fast that you're not going to know if something has a 30 second rage or one minute rage and then you just all of a sudden figure that out i mean even the slimes for instance like unless you're careless like you're probably not ever going to see that thing explode but if you're solo there's a more higher chance of it because you might just be taking a little bit longer to kill something so. that's cool mm. yeah I, I i figured it was just all the same but, but to hear that it's it they react differently when in solo that's really cool it's it's a lot less in heaven high you don't see that as much mm. um like even the bosses let's take uh the 50 boss 50, the 60 bots in heaven on high which is which is uh the the skilla skin with, with uh. all the stabs and everything like in a party the lines will just take and they'll like distribute between the party members but in the solo everything obviously goes to you so there's like those kind of adjustments to, to the scaling if you will well not the scaling but it, adjustments to the mechanics to how they mm -hmm. operate but in palace is a little bit more um and i, I am curious to see if, if if eureka will have something like that that they'll have stuff that'll adjust like without making it easier but even harder for for like having less people or something like that right so, mm. Wow. You were talking about clearing it that first time. Was your first job Red Mage? Yep, it was. Yeah. Well, at the time, it was just everyone just thought yeah. it was just Red Mage. Um, yeah. It was just it was almost silly to even consider the other ones. But again, you were chasing impossible. So mm -hmm. Red Mage seemed like it had the best kit, uh, healing, damage, tidying, everything. Um, and even even thinking about reprogging on some other job, which is it, it seemed like a not I wouldn't necessarily say a waste of time, but it's like. If you felt like Red Meat was going to do it, why try another job? Especially right. if you're just going for the title. Sure. Okay. Yeah. What was the second job you tried, and what ended up being your favorite? I, I want to say, I think it must have been Machinist that I tried second. Mm. Um, I know, like, the second job that cleared that wasn't Red Meat was Bard in Heaven on High. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was back in, I think that was back in uh, Stormblood. But, yeah, I mean, I think Machinist really felt... Uh, match my style with kiting and everything mm -hmm. um the tanks are good but they're not so much i don't really like kind of the one-on-one -on -one as much mm -hmm. but they're very strong and very very capable so were you doing as i try to think back on it i don't think you were <laughs> maybe you were were you doing machinist for your gdq run yeah, I you was. were, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I was like, in my head, I was seeing you <laughs> run around the edges of rooms and do that little, like, flip move. <laughs> and I was like, wait, I think it was Machinist, I'm pretty it was, sure. It was an interesting, <laughs> the, the actual, like, category name of it, it was Machinist. Yeah, this, uh, so long. <laughs> the floors, and then it was uh, both hands on keyboard. Yes. Yep, yep. Yeah. Because that's normally just how you play. play with right. Just I do. Well, that's that's like that that was my ff11 history that i just mm -hmm. played on both ends of the keyboard yeah. um because the mouse sucked well i didn't I, and also i didn't really use a mouse too much just in general um but yeah it was both hands keyboard and and at the time i was just like when i moved from 11 to 14 i was just wondering if i could just play the same way and i basically was I, it took a couple of years to figure out how to adjust it because mm. like there was new new things in 14 that i had to adjust to yeah, that was just my normal way, but I, I knew from like conversations with people and talking about it how that was such a weird way to play. <laughs> so that was that was part of like the advertisement a little bit to to get the category yeah. in. You know, it's like I'm not yeah. using a mouse; it's not very common, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that is a thing already in GDQ. Is like one hand only run, yeah. something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, and, yeah. and it depends on the game too. I mean, there's so many different categories for even just like one game you know one game will be okay mm -hmm. you have all these categories but then you have glitchless or 100 percent or any percent like it's really cool to see uh especially just watching gdq like just for a week you just get to see all these different kind of of you know play styles, runs yeah. for and play styles yeah i think i think what helped was they kind of eased up on the requirements i mean one of the reasons why i even tried to submit for the one reason was because they they had like just they put something in there like a, i don't know if that was there before but it was just basically like you didn't have to beat the game as a requirement which was i think one of the requirements uh -huh. they did have for yeah. lots of games mm. um that you had to go from beginning to end no credits or something so i'm like okay well i'm not beating the game so let's just give this a shot and and yeah, they were possible. opening they were they were more open to the idea of like skill challenges and and stuff like that where it's just a high level of gameplay as opposed to you know necessarily fast 
Mm -hmm. um so that that probably helped a little bit that they that they eased up on that kind of just strictly going fast in the game if you will i think i think it also helps that a lot of the gdq staff like 14 (laughs) a lot of them do whenever whenever there's a couch segment at least one of them is like wearing a 14 shirt i feel oh yeah It was it was great to talk to some of them because they were really like excited to see fourteen just like talking about it and it was so funny I think talking with some of the staff that they were talking to me like like precisely how like if I were to talk to you guys about fourteen like they were concerned yeah. about like the server is like I think the day of they were having some of the server issues like people were getting logged out and oh, one no. of the staff members was like logged into the game he's like hey you okay in game like I just got kicked out I got a ninety k and everything I'm like just checking in I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> just so good so far you know so it was, awesome. it was pretty fun that's great super cool I'm yeah right well we're you know we were gonna ask about big big moments like that was the end of that but we're kind of in gdq now i i guess gdq has got to be one of those right like one of those oh, yeah. huge moments. <laughs> oh, that's that's like that's like way up there already like forget <laughs> it like not i've never come close to, to like a moment like that for sure um but that was huge um yeah that and and i i think like if anything the next the the second one that i could definitely remember uh probably getting at least a personal one was probably getting the astrologian clear uh back mm. in december because that was i was chasing that for like literally six months um <laughs> oh, wow. and i think uh one of the big ones at least on stream was when i was like going for like a world first for for reaper when uh early access came out for Endwalker. because mm. mm. that was just there's a lot of people i was surprised with the amount of people that were just checking it out and and seeing that run when when the service opened so that was that was yeah. fun too well, I mean, Reaper, I almost feel like, funnily enough, even sparked an interest in so many people to try Solo Dungeon to get the Necromancer the title. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. they wanted the aesthetic and the match. So I could yeah. see immediately how even people who, you know, maybe had never thought about it before, they were not only curious about, like, watching somebody incredibly proficient, you know, work through these classes and how you would use them in a specific kind of content, but also going, like, can I get the Necromancer title? <laughs> Maybe. You Re- do you remember? Reaper? Okay, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You. Okay, well, um, Reaper was interesting because that was also when the stat squish happened. Mm-hmm. So aside from yeah. actually learning the job, we had to also see what the adjustments were, if it was for the better or worse. Yeah. Thankfully, it was all, like, more or less, it's like, it was okay. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, and then it was also surprising how strong the job ended up being. Like, it was really good job to, to try to solo so um but mm. yeah for sure that hype was there to to match the the reaper and the necromancer is, is pretty funny to see that having having done all the runs that you've done now um obviously red mage was your first is there a job that you feel like is better or easier to run on um <clears throat> that's always such a fun question yeah. um <laughs> it's see for me i've always suggested that if it if it's phrased exactly how you asked me that, like if it's easier or harder, I always say you gotta just try it. Especially if you're the first time, you just gotta try the job that you're good on. Because sometimes mm-hmm. the the job that you're really good on could actually be the best one, no matter what it says on paper. Like there are objectively better jobs. Just like if you just look at it on paper, right? I mean, if you compare like Astro to like Machinist, I mean that's just not even a question. Like obviously Machinist is gonna be much better. But mm-hmm. I we've had some debates about in in specifically Palace about uh, Machinist and Warrior where uh, you're getting a lot of people getting warrior clears, you're still getting people a lot of, uh, a lot of people getting machinist clears, but those two jobs play very differently, obviously. Mm-hmm. One's cutting, one's not. Um, but what you can do on each job is very fascinating. Um, machinist is just a powerhouse, warrior just has all the self-healing and can mm-hmm. just tank everything and do a lot of, lot of interesting plays. So it really comes down to like, what is your play style? Like, do you like tanking? Do you like kiting? And then going from there, then you can branch out to, to pick the job that, that suits you best. Um, but it's been so much fun seeing people like pick some job that we may not recommend and sticking with it and still getting the title because because that, mm-hmm. that's just really cool. Like, OK, maybe it takes you longer or maybe it didn't take you longer. I don't know. Um, but not to feel like you're you're kind of hard stuck because everyone says do this one job because mm-hmm. we all know it's you. So, I mean, I like like Machinist is the popular one in Palace, but I've talked to so many people who just can't play the job, whether they don't want to, whether they can't, whatever the reason. And you can't, you feel bad when just like, yeah, just just do that job. It's like, oh, I don't don't want to do that job. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it adds to the challenge, right? Too, right? If you pick a job that may not be the best for it, it just makes it maybe a little bit harder. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. And and also, it's a solo challenge. So honestly, like, who cares what anyone else thinks? Yeah. Yeah. Just do whatever you want. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That uh, kind of leads us back into GDQ. 
so was GDQ your first experience with like official speed running? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was funny because I kind of set a goal for myself to to try to get on that show at somehow, some way. Mm. Um, I had never done any speed runs at all of anything, any games or whatever. Not not in like an official capacity. Mm -hmm. right? Like not so if we if we're talking official capacity, I'm saying like submitting something to like yeah. speedrun.com because speedrun.com yeah. is really where you kind of put it put, put everything up there officially. Um, so like I had I had started with Stranger Paradise because that game was fun, so I tried to do <laughs> that and I was doing like pretty good. The community was like super small, but it was a lot of fun. And then I went to Stray because that was interesting. It was a new game. I figured Yay. that'd be a fun game to try out. And that was that was a huge difference from Strangers because there were so many people trying to do that game. Mm. And I figured that would that would be like my method of doing it. Pick a game, try to speedrun it, and then see if I get in. But then for AGDQ, I'm like, oh, let me just submit Stray and Palace and see what happens. And they picked Palace and they thought it was a good a good show for them. So it's like, okay, well, yeah, I'll do the, the thing that I'm actually good on. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really it's really interesting. I follow a few speedrunners and it's really interesting like when a new game comes out to see how the speedrun community kind of like accepts it and like molds the categories and stuff because when a game comes mm -hmm. out, there are no categories. <laughs> like they yeah, have yeah. to decide what the categories are going to be and then even as they start to figure that out, they're still finding, you know, new new things. Um, I mean, you know, like we were talking about earlier, finding out about the last three floors and, and certain effects and stuff like there's mm -hmm. always going to be more discovery. Yeah. Um, and this is it's really fascinating to see kind of that whole process when when something comes out. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. And, and someone who's super fresh into the idea and seeing the communities, I mean, seeing that with, say, Stray, how they had to adjust and listen to people and all the all yeah. the people trying to do that and you know, make the rules and everything, but that's all community run, you know, that, that there's mm -hmm. no like governing body. It's just all up to the community and their moderators to figure all that out and sort it out and then make it so that they can make it officialized, present it, all that stuff. So absolutely. And it's interesting, like, like here with, with, with Deep Dungeon, <clears throat> there's more people that are pushing like one to 100 speed runs in heaven on high mm. or some type of other categories. And it, it's honestly just community just thinking, Oh, this, you know what, this might sound like a cool idea. Let's just give yeah. this a shot. And then, if it latches on, you get a lot of people, then okay, you probably have something. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty cool to see that all evolve, even up till now, up to present day. Yeah, I mean, especially. I, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, I was gonna say, especially in MMOs, because MMO yes. RPGs, there is challenge, right? Yeah. There, there is a a huge range of content, and I think one of the big things, even going back to when MMOs really started to become categories on like Twitch and things, right? I remember when I started streaming, my partner was, I mean, I was streaming Overwatch for a while, right? Mm -hmm. But then my partner was like, oh, you want to stream an MMO? I mean, I don't know if anybody will really want to watch that, but like you can. <laughs> and, and, and of course, I mean, they were still totally supportive, you know, and they were mm -hmm. like, ultimately do whatever you want and what makes you happy. And I was like, I think this is it. But we have seen, I think, this discussion shift we saw the same thing in guild wars 2 initially guild wars 2 tried really hard to get into the professional esports yeah. scene with their pvp casting and they had a whole league and everything they were doing um you know international competitions and over time as it kind of you know showed that at least in mmos that maybe didn't have the same drive as in things like starcraft or league of legends that fell off and yet now here we are again seeing how many people play these games even behind the scenes of these events, seeing how many people have started to develop even things in like WoW to stuff like the Race to World First broadcast, which now we're getting in 14 as well in other areas. It makes sense that the player base would want to distill a component of an MMO mm -hmm. into something like speedrunning. And yet it has always been difficult in MMOs because when you look at a lot of the content, I think divvying up those categories is right. kind of difficult. Like, how do we quantify this? Okay, you run through all the expansions as fast as possible, right. but like theoretically, yeah. you shouldn't be able to do glitches that like catapult you through space to the last expansion. <laughs> and like, I bought a, okay, I bought a right. story <laughs> skip. I win. <laughs> yeah, it's like trying to figure out. Okay, maybe that it's dungeons. Oh, but wait, mm -hmm. in dungeons now we have these other limits. We have level caps. We have um, you can only pull up to a certain point. We have these sorts of things. And so pal was brilliant that you submitted it and that this has become something yeah. that has started to form around the community because it is maybe one of the few-ish pieces of content maybe you i mean can even speak more to this range but it's one of the few-ish pieces of content that i can think of in an mmo right now that lends itself to something right. like that 
so well in a way that isn't as limiting or restrictive when you are trying to, you know, create a stable game for everyone that all around the world people can play. I mean, of course, I think you could do like speed clears of fights sure. and, you know, but it's, it's interesting. I feel like this was such a good pick. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because, I mean, I'm sure you guys have probably tried to do Dungeons Unsynced, but it always mm -hmm. fascinated me how at the end of those dungeons, you get a time, right? You get a time yeah. that shows you how long it takes. Like, I was like, why don't that go into like a leaderboard or something? That would be kind of cool. Should, yeah. Um, but but yeah, for, for Deep Dungeon, I think even though there's no time, well, I mean, there is actually, I mean, you are chasing a clock, right? Yeah. You can't time out. But I think the probably with with speed runs and categories i think there's a lot of <clears throat> allure to the idea of like roguelikes you know those type of games that 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 is what deep dungeon kind of provides you that you're getting something that is ever changing that every run mm -hmm. is not going to be the same so there is that challenge of like just kind of dealing with what the game gives you kind of thing and i think with with the mmo in general i think the the dynamic that you have is that it's it's also ever changing with patches right from expansion right. to expansion patch to patch jobs will shift and once job shifts i mean the whole run could could adjust it could become mm -hmm. harder it could become easier i mean even with machinists i was you know slightly seeing how the patch was going to happen to see what kind of changes mm -hmm. they did just to, just if i had to make some type of adjustment yeah. to whatever i was doing but those are the that's what makes it fun honestly so you could you could revisit and i think that's why a lot of people are entering especially palace and, and heaven on high feeling like it's fresh content for them because it's still it's still relevant to some to some extent and with all the changes mm -hmm. that happen with the jobs they feel like it's brand new to them even though it's been in the game for six years you know that that should not really be the case that people shouldn't be as excited as <laughs> you know <clears throat> instead of doing like you know the savage right now the savage you know that that's that's fresh but they're excited because it's it's brand new to them it's a new challenge for them and there's the big time investment and in everything so yeah for sure i kind of miss in in 1.0 when you went through a dungeon, if you went through fast enough, you got extra chests. Time chests, I, yep. Time chests. Yeah. I wish mm. I wish we still had something like that. And actually, we're kind of seeing a similar thing more recently where, like, for example, in the latest dungeon, in that second fight, the the better, not necessarily faster, but the better you clear that fight, they give you a rank. Or, like, in... Um, a little verbal, or, you know, Zadnor, the whole, the whole Boja stuff. Yeah, in the, in the big Boja. dungeons. You, you screw up two times and you're dead. So yeah. they're they're giving us a ranking. It's not exactly a speed thing, but they're like, "Hey, don't mess up, don't mess yeah, yeah, up." Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. I kind of like those little things. It's always things. interesting to see, you know, again, kind of coming back to like that idea of like what the developer intends versus like what the community turns it mm -hmm. into. Um, you know, I mean, back you know a few fan fests ago, you know, they had the, the big feast thing, they had jerseys and everything, and then you yeah. know for a little while everyone's like, oh man, Square Enix is gonna do feast esports, and that never really took off because of the way mm -hmm. that PvP was in the game, or you know you have you have uh, gosh, what was the the name of the Umbrella Core? Uh, it was a Resident Evil PvP game. Oh sure, yeah, built oh off gosh. of like Unity. It was awful, and yeah, yeah, it was awful, and it was like it was dead on release. And they, <laughs> they were like, "Yeah, it's gonna be esports, and it's gonna be awesome." And it's just mm, no, yeah. So I'm really, <laughs> well, I think... I'm yeah. really oh, no, curious I say... to see yeah. how mm -hmm. um, you know with the community, you know, coming in now uh, with Heaven on High with Deep Dungeon, um, how much of this they're looking at. Um, you know, and, and what they're considering, uh, you know, for Eureka Orthos that'll be coming right. up soon. If they're going, you know, obviously we'll have the leaderboard, um, but I'm yep. I'm curious yeah. if they're they're planning anything else or if they're planning on listing other things on the leaderboard. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we have been we're we're entering an age right that the idea of who would want to watch an MMO. I think. It turns out the answer is so many people. A lot of people. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? And even if esports, as it was initially conceptualized, or speedrunning, as it was initially conceptualized, um, maybe, like we were just saying, right? It didn't cover all the categories, mm -hmm. or it didn't have all this nuance. Over time, that evolves. And I think even the way we see the games respond to the idea of free advertising and a giant audience that's eager to consume anything you, anything adjacent to your game, be it official or not, I mean, the amount of tournaments we've seen popping up for Crystalline Conflict, the official yeah. ones they've been yeah. running, yeah. Um, the power of things like the World Race, all this stuff where games, I think, are becoming much more conscious of this and also realizing that that kind of audience, that kind of production, these sorts of events like, um, you know, Games on Quick, 
can be much bigger than was initially conceived yeah. of and can have a wider variety. And the audience is there. It's just figuring out how to do that. And even with Ultimate recently, we've had so many conversations about the spectacle of Ultimate mm -hmm. and yep. how like that knowledge, how much of that affects the way these fights are designed or, you know, these gimmicks or these reveals. And I can only imagine, especially with your run recently, that it had to have recontextualized it in many ways, even for Square Enix, who might have known this was happening happening but then right. suddenly went oh wait hold on this is on games done quick oh <laughs> yeah i i have no doubt they saw it i mean <laughs> final fantasy 14 has actually been a sponsor of of gdq yeah. in the past so i yeah. i have mm -hmm. no doubt that they at least were <laughs> aware that yeah. that it was very much a thing i mean and it was it's it's so interesting too like i think you know we talked about crystal and conflict and how there's been um player run uh you know cups and stuff like that and i think it's important for especially like this time around for square enix to kind of put this new pvp mode out there see how we react and then they say okay they love it they're doing their own stuff let's do some official things i think mm -hmm. that was a really good way to to kind of approach it this time around um and i had another point i was working towards and i completely forgot what it was <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think what's interesting with with like talk of the world race and all that stuff. I mean, you know, with 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 how Frosty was handling mm -hmm. all that all that stuff with the community and trying to get everyone together so that we can report the news. I mean, one of the things like you mentioned the leaderboard on uh, for Deep Dungeon. I mean, that's that is just sitting there where that'll be like the tracker for the world race for for EO. We don't have to have anyone do anything. It just automatically uploads. It has a date, it has a time. It has the floors, so you know, like they have a system that could that could do something like that, mm -hmm. where it can track people when they get the clear. It updates every single day. It could be something for it. Maybe they use for it. I don't know. Maybe, but the system's there. It is. It is for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I guess to bring us back to specifically your run with yeah. games mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. So you talked a little bit about submitting, right? The runs that you were like, oh, hey, well, maybe I'll submit these. And you had to go through that process and uh, see what would get approved and then obviously work with them to sort of realize how that would fit into their programming. But were there any other extra preparation steps? So how did you kind of get ready for the event mm -hmm. and the run that you were going to do? So it's interesting. So I guess I'll start at the run itself where we had we had some of the issues with the frame drops and everything, but um, mm -hmm. we actually had a whole tech check to check the system, to check the audio and everything. So we did like the proper, everyone did the proper thing to, to make sure that it was supposed to work, but it was just kind of the, I guess the weird oddity of actually being in the instance that had some issues. But yeah, it was their, their back end and, and getting everything set was such, so, so professional. Like everything was so set on a schedule. Like they, they did the call outs to do like a, like a social media thingy and they made mm -hmm. sure everyone was doing all the tech checks <clears throat> and then they had everyone getting the schedules and all that stuff and warning everyone if they were gonna, you know, what time they're going in. I had, I had constant communication with, with certain staff members, even the host that I had sent me a DM. He wanted to get on a call to just like level out with some certain details about how to do the, dungeon. so it was, it was very well done, very well run. Mm -hmm. Um, so overall, that whole process was fantastic. And even 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 when we were having some of the issues during the actual run, I mean, they were trying to help me out as quickly as possible. It was tough because I can't pause the game. So, but, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, MMOs, just, just trying man. to, yeah, MMOs, you know, can't pause the game. Um, but yeah, just 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 kind of the calm of, of them trying to be like, okay, try this, put this in. Okay, go live, do this thing. Do the, like, so it was, it was really cool to see all that kind of everyone staying calm, just making sure mm. that they resolve the problem until we finally had that solution. So. It was good. It was it was a great experience overall, and then I just had to just kind of do my thing and everything. So, how did that go from your perspective? Like, chat was hype. Like, could, could you feel that like the whole time? No. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why is because I consciously decided not to look at chat. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. that makes sense. So I I figured I wasn't gonna keep up. Like, I usually read yeah. my chat when I go in, but I figured let me. I had like I wanted to like get in a lot of like information as much as I can, so I was just not mm -hmm. looking at chat. I saw it after, like I, I, like I, I know what you're talking about because I looked at the bot after, yeah. but not during the run. No, I, nothing. I was just, I was just focusing on just yeah. getting it done, you know. So, and I think more so once I had like my brain was getting all like weirded out with all the all the stop and goes, like it was just mm -hmm. getting a little mushy. So it's just just trying to get make sure I get to the the end and everything kind of survives at, at right. that point. Yeah, that that actually reminds me of the point I was gonna go towards mm. earlier, talking about like community and adopting the thing. Um, I wanted to say it was it was so cool once the the run was getting ready to start, um, just watching the chat because yeah. it's like there's so many of us from the Final Fantasy 14 community like noticing each other in the chat. We're all like, oh hey, how's it going? <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> 
<laughs> wave at each other. It was we're it was all really here. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was cute to see people come in and go fourteen on GDQ, and yeah. everybody like they had just discovered it and they got so excited. It was, and... it was it was one of the most wholesome like GDQ chats I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> well, even in game was insane because I mean I tried to put out the call like being, telling people like oh I'm gonna be here at the beginning, I'm gonna be here at the end, but seeing all the people, especially in the beginning of the run, sitting on that one seventy. Yeah. One right yeah, that, I was surprised Never. to see so many people that just waiting in that little instance I was, area. I was surprised. I mean, I would have, I would have expected, you know, some of someone like the deep dungeon community, the usual guys, yeah. to like basically do this on a daily basis. But to see all those people in that zone, like it was just insane to see how many like actually made the attempt to just chill and and wait there. And then at the end to see all the people out there too, which is just wild. I mean, that's that's cool. That that's kind of where the the awesome part of the community comes in, right? They're just there mm -hmm. to just hang around to be part of the moment. Um, so that was really cool to see. I mean, mm. for all the issues that you had with the tech stuff, yeah. I was saying this even before we went live, but I mean, it's, it's just the truth. The whole chat, but also me personally, I think all of us were so impressed because, I mean, obviously you stream this, you're used to, you know, yeah. dealing with technology, you're used to being a content creator, but there's always that moment in, in the moment when you're live, especially for something big like this, and you're just going, okay, I have no option but to just keep going, so I'm just going to do what they tell me to do. But with all of that said you would never have noticed it. I mean, yeah. you were talking through it in such yeah. a way that I was watching and I have gotten, I've got, I was like, what have I done in the deep dive? <laughs> I have gotten my full clear of heaven on high with a group yeah. and I've made it to the final floors of palace. I don't know if we actually finished finished though, now that I think about it and I want to go back and finish that. But mm. Even so, watching you go through it, I was like, I could do this. I could see this. <laughs> what do we do now, Behemoth? Tell me about it. Okay, easy, yeah. yeah. Succubus, yeah, That's exactly this moment. Great. I, I, I also <laughs> had similar feelings. I was like, yeah, yeah I should do this. <laughs> it's that aspirational content in MMOs, yeah. like, like rating, ultimate, deep dungeon, all these different channels for this outlet. It, it's so great to see it, and I'm, I'm so glad that it was – so you know signal blasted recently I think, I think it comes back to you know what we were talking about earlier right it's that idea of once people start doing it yes you see yeah. it and you go oh yeah okay that's i could do that like you know i have to do it yeah. once obviously like it takes it takes time to practice and every right but like you, oh, could, I know. Anyone, you know people can do it but and i think that's really the, cool it's the benefit yeah. of having somebody that is calm collected confident and experienced in it you know what i mean yes. because Anything is terrifying if you're just going through it and you've died 50 times and you have no <laughs> idea why. But if somebody is sitting there and like you were doing, it's going, okay, well, this is this enemy type. So we have to get out. We have to kill them within 10 seconds. So here we are. One <laughs> second left. One second left. Got him. All right. And now we're going to go through it. <laughs> I mean, it breaks it down in a way. Mm -hmm. Your play-by-plays in that were so well done for being the person operating it that yeah. I really, I would not be surprised if it has smoothed the the idea of doing it yeah. even to a lot of people who before would have never thought about it and i mean for anybody who's listening who's just hearing about this go just watch angela's stream like <laughs> yes. you'll get this every single time i mean just go but it's something where i think a lot of people might think it's something they would never do or that they'd have no interest in it but then to see somebody doing it and despite tech issues and everything else mm -hmm. just going for it it was so awesome like i, I said I, oh you go ahead I think I think one of the funniest things that I've seen over time in the community has been you get people that that finally step into it, right? Getting into it is the hard part. When you finally mm -hmm. step in, you start to get to like past fifty or past one hundred. Um, we always joke that that you know you got struck by by the addiction of the of the content. But <laughs> most of the people they they're there. At the, okay, I'm gonna get this title. I'm gonna get lone hero. I wanna get lone uh, necromancer and everything. And the very next thing, the once they get the title, they're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go back in tomorrow. I'm gonna try another job." <laughs> you know, like anymore, you think like, like the end game was the title? No, they just they this like it's like they built this knowledge base and they just want to keep using that knowledge mm -hmm. base. Like I would say that's like ninety percent of people, honestly. Barely do I see someone like do the do the do the content like jet and like be like I'll see you in in, in Eureka Orthos or something like that. So it's really yeah. interesting to see that like you know once you really get into it, you you kind of go for those the the time you put the time investment. You're like, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what this this content's actually kind of cool to, to keep doing. You know whenever I can. You know, speaking of Eureka Orthos, how hype are you? <laughs> very 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 <laughs> hyped about that. It's been a long time waiting for for something new to happen. Right. So five years something five like four and a half years so yeah so we but. so we talked a little bit about you know palace of the dead into heaven on high right like you know what they learned from that we talked a little bit about that but 
what do you hope they learn going into this one? What do you what do you want to see? What do you not want to see? Uh, I guess what I don't want to see is it being cleared so quickly. So, mm. like, I think okay. a party's gonna get done with it fast. Oh, it, sure. It's a little it's a little interesting watching some some of the community doing these interesting challenge runs to get ready for this thing. Like, there are people in the community that are gonna take this very seriously in a light party. Yeah. We just had someone do it where they tried to climb without using any bow landers. We had people Ooh, try to climb wow. with zero arm and armor in heaven on high. Like they nuked it completely and then tried to Ooh. climb. Um, so it's going to be like very fascinating to see who kind of what whose plan is going to work the best to, to get up there up top. But yeah, that's that's I think the only thing I wouldn't want to see is that it gets it gets beaten up so quickly with kind of mm -hmm. the amount of time we put in the knowledge base that we get in. Um, I mean the thing that they've mentioned about kind of the bosses being more like bosses is definitely one that I would be very excited to see. Cause right. some people kind of get, get a little sleepy on the, on the heaven on high bosses. Like I'm like, even for solo kind of just very repetitive, very, very right. simplistic. So seeing the first boss that they showed on, on the live stream was, was really nice. So kind of hoping that they will get more uh, of that complexity because one of my, one of my favorite parts, solo content in 14 is the, is the Boja jewels. They were great. Um, trying yeah. to do mm -hmm. the full run of that, not, not trying to do it like the speed runway, but doing it like the, you know, beginning to end all the, all the mechanics, they were really nice mechanics. So something similar to that added in, in some facet would be fantastic in, in the new one. Mm. Yeah. So you were saying that people are out there preparing for it already. So if someone was new, like just brand new, and I'm like, okay, I want to get in on Eureka Ortho, what do, what do you recommend? Um, I mean, how I'm gonna do it is yeah. it's I'm I'm taking in a, a a light party for now, so we're gonna build the arm and armor because that's gonna be fresh. Uh, yeah. trying to get a little bit of postures probably for the for the regen potions, but then I'm gonna start solving from the from from that point once I'm set to go. But I mean, for like new people, it, it's kind of a little bit similar. You know, you want to get the base of getting some of the regeneration potions ready to go, some of the arm and armor. You don't have to go to 99 or the cap, but you can get pretty high. Like I always been saying like 60, 70, even for Palace and Heaven on High, say like 60, 70, um, to get that ready. And then and then from there, just to just dive in after that. You know, whether you go in, see it with, with a bunch of people or just do it on your own, um, that's the best way. Because really, it's, it's just going to be knowledge building. You just have to learn what's there. Mm -hmm. And then that's what all of us are going to do. It's going to be yeah. kind of no different. Um, so just get the knowledge in, record it all, and then just try to remember it on each each consecutive run. And and so, honestly, do probably heaven on high. It's probably the best because that's going to mm. be the most adjacent to Eureka Orthos. You know, try to go in there, see what you can do in there, and the stuff will carry over. We mentioned that earlier. Like the knowledge will carry over. So getting it now will help you into the into the new one. So if someone's you know following you, will they be able to find all this like information? I'm sure there's a bunch of discords and like spreadsheets everywhere. Um, well, the current information we have definitely is on my Discord. Yeah. Uh, we are also very slowly getting stuff on to, to Icy Veins. So it's more oh, of a nice. public, yeah. uh, public website for people to do that. And we're slowly, slowly getting things up on there. But yeah, the channel, the Discord there, uh, that's where you can definitely get the information. Um, I would say for you, Ike Orthos, we'll kind of do the same. Probably get it a little bit faster on, yeah. on Icy Veins because we'll, we'll be able to, we have that connection now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. Is there anything that you hope they don't bring into Orthos from Heaven on High, with that being our most recent. And you were talking about how they added in certain things that maybe like added in a sense of ease or convenience. Is there mm -hmm. anything within that or, you know, that you're kind of going, well, I hope we get this kind of return to challenge or we don't get this or we get something mm -hmm. in its place or. Um, so between the two that we have now, Palace and Heaven on High, Palace kind of categorized, aside from leaving like Behemoth out and leaving the two yeah. floors out, um, you have more aggro potential. You have the enemies are hitting you not as hard. Heaven on high, you have the shorter, but then the enemies are a little bit rougher, they're a little bit more, uh, more difficult. But the aggro is a little bit more chill. You know, I would say like kind of like just mixing that together would be great. I mean, just making it, you know, the enemies harder, maybe mechanically a little bit more challenging, a little bit more unique, would be great. Um, I would just kind of again, I would just kind of hate if they just tone it down when mm -hmm. you know for since like heaven on high obviously people have been pushing that content like straight to like limit and beyond so that like honestly that's really the only thing i would i would not like to see is that i mean there is some things we've joked about like how you know they removed uh accuracy a long time ago but yeah. blind is still a thing and in, in yeah engine. <laughs> and I, I remember asking him like so so who believes that blind isn't going to be in yuriko with this is like no one no one believes everyone yeah. believes blind is going to be in there right oh yeah um so 
And then you have enemies that that are like mainstays that are always kill people like chimeras are just the the main killers of everyone and i would be sad if they're not in there like they probably will be in, in eureka so stuff like that um but yeah i mean i'm i'm kind of i guess like <clears throat> evil in the sense that i would rather it be like ridiculously hard yeah and everyone's just suffering <laughs> for like weeks and months you know like i'll be fine the point with that. is the challenge yeah exactly yeah, exactly yeah 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 if they put in a I mean, the savage mode is technically doing the extended floors and mm -hmm. doing it solo. But if they were to add some kind of additional difficulty modifier set for, I mean, I guess you could do it for either solo runs mm -hmm. or, you know, for um, for group where you could add those modifiers in as a part of the actual mechanics of the game, not just a challenge you set for yourself. Is that something you would be interested in? Absolutely, yeah. I would love to. I mean, mm -hmm. we're. I mean, right now we're clearing the other the other two deep dungeons. Where like the the top runners are clearing them. Like just every run you go in, you clear. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's where we're at right now. But that's all knowledge. Like that, mm -hmm. the the using the commanders, how to use them, how to manage them, uh, what all the enemies do. I mean, if you know what everything is coming at you, there's not much to be surprised about. So you are getting some consistencies with the clear. So being able to challenge that consistency in some fashion, that would be kind of fun. I I would definitely would love that to see that. Yeah, I think it'd be cool too, and and I know I, I've had this thought a few times. I just haven't brought it up yet. I think it'd be really cool to see. In addition to those titles, I think there should be like framers kits now too for solo. Oh, absolutely, right? yeah, that's been this one. Be, like this, this. Would be, this would be such a good patch <laughs> right when we get Eureka Orthos to go back yeah. and add one for Heaven on High and add one for yeah. for Palace of the Dead. I think oh, it'd be, so be cool. great. Yeah. yeah, I would yeah. love that, especially for yeah. for the solo titles, etc. Mm -hmm. Like you were mm -hmm. saying, like your background would be a perfect one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there, there's so many cool elements, you know, like the 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 little uh, the tower with the, the eyeball or the glass pumpkin thing. Yeah. Or there's so many like yeah. things that they could do with the the, the framers kits. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That'd be so cool. I, I think, think we I think did. That's it. it. I think such a, it was. I mean, such a great time. Like, <laughs> I'm coming out of this now. Like, I'm like, hey, you guys want to like make a <laughs> Eureka static? Like, <laughs> there was four of us. I do it. Guys, what do we talk about on Aetherite Radio this week? I don't know. Let's just do... Or I just, I just want to do Deep Dungeon. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Again, Angel, thank you so much for, for talking yeah. with us. It was, it was such a thank blast. Thank you for having um, me. Where, yes. where can people find you on the internet? Um, I am usually streaming on Twitch. Uh, I usually put a lot of those videos onto my YouTube channel, which is where a lot of like people who just can't happen to get the, to the Twitch stream, they watch it over there. Um, I have I have stuff on TikTok and the Discord and everything, <laughs> so you can find all that. If 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 whatever is left, I do have it on my Twitch uh, about us stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's where yep. you can find me. We got it in the chat. We'll have it also in the episode description. So make sure to go check that out and follow Angelus Perfect. for all the deep dungeon stuff. <clears throat> yeah. If you want to follow me on the internet, uh, you can do that Twitter and Twitch Raffleberg uh, YouTube Raffleberg X Zen. Where can they find you? Sinidra underscore A is my Twitter. I don't do things on Twitch. That's a lie. I do. It's plus the word. <laughs> one the number shot the word. That one has underscores between those numbers and words. That's a mm -hmm. D&D slash tabletop RPG podcast I do with my lovely friend Aldino and some of our other crazy bros and gals. Um, tonight, we have a show at 10 p.m. Eastern. It's d and Diablo, and I'm going to talk like this the whole time. It's going to be great. <laughs> Uh, Aldino, where can people find you online? Here and only here. And Twitter. And plus one shot. I'm not going to do it. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> we all know. Uh, we all know. <laughs> we all know. Plus the word. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where you can find me. And one, like I say, all the time, one day we'll be back to playing D&D &D on this podcast. One we'll day. We'll do it. We'll do it. One day, very one soon. Day. And Rook? Yep, you can find me on Twitch at Rookery. That's R O O K U R I. You can also find me on YouTube at the same and on Twitter at Rookery underscore. That's it. Those are the places. All right. And if you want to contact us here, just in general for the show, you can email us aetheriteradio at gamerescape.com or tweet at us at aetheriteradio. You can also find us as gamerescape on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Discord. Discord.gg slash gamerescape. We have an Aetherite Radio channel on there. We've got a Final Fantasy 14 channel. All sorts of stuff to talk about. If you if you want to voice your thoughts about Ant Man, we have an MCU yep. channel. That's and a thing or the that came Wasp. Out. And or yep. the Wasp and or Quantum Mania. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Whatever. We have we have is all that sorts out? of What do you mean is that out? <laughs> 
I gotta go. I've been under a rock. Oh, I am disappointed. <laughs> I am so disappointed uh, right now. Oh my listen, gosh. This this Tuesday, this Tuesday was, was Valentine's Day, so my normal movie paying attentionness was taken over by, by eating love. delicious food and getting real yeah. drunk. That's fair. <laughs> I love that too. <laughs> oh yeah, and love I guess. Oh yeah, Whatever. and love. Whatever the holiday is about, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is going to do it for us this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and if you're watching live, go check out Fish Fest. Fish Fest is going on. Uh, we talked mm -hmm. with Fruity last no. week. So uh, go and check that out. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.